know you guys love this, but 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Boom. Do you want me to close the door? Do you no, you can leave it open okay. if people want to walk in. Yeah, oh, that's cool. I don't even need a mic. You know. You're a small group. Um, <clears throat> sit here. And your chances are much better now to win something, which is very cool. Awesomeness. Yay. Love winning stuff. Me too. I might put myself in the drawing. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Daryl Gilbo, if you don't know. And um, if you don't know who I am, I, sometimes I forget who I am, so don't worry about it. Uh, but I do bring a list because sometimes I forget what I've done. Isn't that terrible? Oh, it's fun, isn't it? But, well, it's fun because you know, you, when you're doing it and you're like, oh, did I do? Oh yeah, I did that one. I did that it's one. So sometimes I, you know, need to bring up my little list when I forget. Uh, well, the latest thing I did in video game in the anime world was Do Rara Ra. Do anybody know that show? Yeah. Yeah. I love that show. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to watch it. Just have another time. Just yet. yeah, yeah. And I think it's running still in Cartoon Network. I think they're replaying it. So yeah. it plays on Cartoon Network. Uh, video game world. I just um, was in. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. The voice uh, Beautiful Joe in that in that one. Uh, and Durarara on Mikado, if you know the show. Um, also, I have a, another video game coming out, but I don't know the title because, you know, a lot of times when you do these things, they, they won't tell you the title because it, it's secret. You know, there's all these, they don't want it leaked out, but I believe it's coming out. Um, at the end of this month, or it may even already be out, and I just don't know. But I know it's a Final Fantasy, like 13 or something. I was just like a bunch of voices in it, so I don't really know um, the title. The working title was Yellow P. So they make up titles that, you know, they have nothing to do with the actual game. So that's, I'm coming out in something later. Uh, if you, I'm Daryl Gilbo, for you guys just walked in, uh, recently did the anime show Do Ra Ra Ra, if you're familiar with it. Um, also, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom in the video game world. Uh, other stuff that I've done has been Samurai Shampoo, uh, Paranoia Agent, uh, smaller roles like on Bleach, Kakashi, um, Morabito, Guardian of the Spirit, when They Cry, uh, Hiragashi, anyone know that one? Yeah. No? Yeah. <laughs> Over, Overman King Gainer, um, a show called Ice Pure, Deers. Um, see, that's why I forget, because there's so many. Uh, 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 Code Ge Geese, I was in, the, in a few of those. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, Standalone Complex. Uh, Eyes, Pure, Kamichu, Kakashi, Kokaze, Morabito, Guardian of Spirit, I think I said that one. Uh, Prince of Tennis, Boys B, uh, Captain Herlock, Stelvia, Zoid's Genesis, which I'm dying for them to release. They haven't released yet. Um, 50 episodes. Anyone knows the Zoids? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Zoid's Genesis was done a couple of years ago, and so far they haven't released it yet. They're sitting on it for some reason. I would die for them to release that. Yeah, me too. Tell me. <laughs> I want them to very badly. Uh, some of the video games have been like Radi Radiata Stories. Um, I was a lead character in Final Fantasy, Crystal Chronicles, Crystal Bearers, uh, Dawn of Mana, Cold Decept Saga, uh, Warriors Order Chi 1 and 2, uh, Blue Dragon, Awakened Shadow, Dynasty Warriors 6, Six Empire, Strike Force, Legendary, uh, Avalon Code, Valkyrie Profile, Covenant of the Plume. Uh, they had also another video game called Fantasy Earth Zero, where it was like one of those online games um, that you know anyone could join online. But uh, I think they've already completed it. But. So those are some of the um, the shows I've been in, and uh, hopefully more to come. But uh, I'm based in Los Angeles, and I've been doing voiceovers for anime and video games since about 2004, I believe, or 2006. So it's been, you know, a little while, and, um, you know, feel so grateful to be a part of it, of course, and have been going to cons for a, a while, too, which has been, was so eye-opening for me, you know, when I started doing anime. The first con I went to was in Dallas, it was Acon, which was, you know, huge, and I was just dumbfounded, you know, I was like, 
why am I here? And, you know, and being on a panel with, I was like on a panel with Vic Mignogna and, you know, a bunch of famous voice over actors. So it was a little overwhelming, you know, and it was great because I got to kind of see what, what they do and meet the fans. And, because, you know, you're in a studio and you don't know how it's taken or received. So it's great to come and, and see that you guys love anime. And, and of course, see the cosplay. And sometimes I love when I see my characters dressed up. You know, that's always a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do? Um, one thing I like to do is be very interactive with you guys. Um, I have uh, two uh, postcards, do ra 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 postcards that um, you can only get them. These are very very rare because uh, I did a uh, panel in Los Angeles with. Um, actually several of the voice actors in at one of the cons there, Anime Expo. And so uh, Anaplex and Adult Swim kind of printed these out so for the, uh, for the promo of the show. And you can't buy them anywhere. So what I'll do is I'll have a, like a little drawing. Anyone who asks a question about anything do ra 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 or anything voice acting, any show you might know I've been in, anything you want to know about that world, then we'll, at the end I'll do a drawing and two people will win these. Okay. Um, if you don't know the show, you've got to see the show. It's an incredible show. Who, who's seen Do Ra Ra Ra? Anyone? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's a great ensemble where incredible characters, uh, a headless writer, I mean, you know, there's a black Russian sushi guy, there's uh, you know, the, the three teenage friends, there's uh, Shizuo, this guy with superhuman strength and anger management problems, who lifts bending machines and throws them at people. Uh, there's Isaiah, who I don't believe is human, but <laughs> we can talk about that. Uh, but, you know, there's just so many incredible characters. The mad scientist type people and a lot of, lot of great stuff. Gangs and all that. Uh, so, if you guys are interested in, in winning one of these or winning one for a friend, I would love to uh, definitely give them out to you. What I would like to do is, who wants to be a volunteer? Oh, who wants to volunteer? Awesome. Okay, you can be my secretary. Oh, fabulous. Yay. <laughs> so anyone who asks, what's your name? My name's Kristen. Kristen, with a C. Okay. Anyone who asks um, a question, just write their name, and then we're, we'll do like a little fold it up, and we'll do like a little drawing. And of course, you get in because you're helping. Okay. So, Kristen, you're the first one. Thank you. You're Kristen. Thank you. Where did you eat? Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> My lovely assistant, Kristen. Yay. Um, so, does anyone have any any questions about either the show or anything about voice acting? And what's your name? My name is Nathaniel. Daniel. Everyone does that. Nathaniel, not Daniel. Oh, Nathaniel. You know, a lot of people call me Daniel. I'm Daryl. I get it all the time. That, oh, you're Daniel. Yeah. So now the shoe's on the other foot, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, something that I noticed, like, I've only watched a little bit of the show, but yeah. the, 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 headless, uh, the headless horse uh, girl, uh, she's... Right, Selty. Oh. How does, how does she talk about a head? <laughs> <laughs> well, because a voice actor does. No. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's funny because, you know, the way, how I look at it, I don't really, I don't know if, I have to go back now and watch this show. But, you know, because when she's typing, I'm wondering if it's, because she's always showing them, I'm wondering if it's just you're hearing her, you know, it's like, you know, you're hearing her thoughts is what I think. Because so, the people are pretty much reading what she's writing on that little computer on her or that she's texting. So I, th I, that's what I think. You know, I could be wrong. I wonder how she eats. Yeah, I wonder that too. <laughs> you know? So I guess I, yeah. I, but she made a dinner one time for her, her boyfriend. So. <laughs> well, that show freaks me out though, because I mean, you know, this is the funny thing. Like when you're doing these things. We don't get the, the script in advance, so it's not like we get to see you know the show in advance. Um, now with with Durara is a little different because I, I actually went on uh, Crunchyroll and saw the Japanese version because I wanted to at least see a little bit before I would go in and record. Usually that doesn't happen, but you know I I was just as shocked watching the show on my own and I was like you know 
the thing about Celty and the, then finding out the, the uh, what's the guy who, uh, I can't think of his character name, the one who loves her? Anyone yeah, Shinra, 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 who's voiced by uh, Yuri Lowenthal. I was like, oh, he's in love with this headless woman and... Looks on everything. Yeah, and he's right, right. <laughs> and he doesn't want her to get her head back. So I thought, wow, that's interesting. So, you know, that's, that's what I liked about the show was it was so, so many twists and turns and things you didn't expect, you know, about the characters. But uh, so each time I went in to record, it was always a shock sometimes or a surprise, you know. Like I didn't know my character, I, I don't want to give anything away, but I didn't know my character formed that group. You know, I don't want to spoil anything if you're going to watch it. So, but, very good. Any, anyone else? Anything about voice acting? Voice acting? Come on, you gotta win a postcard. <laughs> Just Nathaniel's gonna win it all. <laughs> or Daniel will. <laughs> How did you get started in voice acting? Uh, what's your name? Leah. Leah, L E A H? Yep. Yeah. Um, I got started, well, I uh, moved to Los Angeles to be an actor. I went to um, American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I went there for two years and studied, you know, when you go there you study everything from dialects to movement to voice to, you know, of course acting, scene work. Uh, so I, I wanted to be an actor, so I did that for two years, graduated, and started mostly doing like low budget films or whatever you can get, you know, I've done commercials and TV. Um, and then I, I had done a, um, it was like an industrial film for Arizona. This is the weird connection to anime. Um, and the woman who played my mother, her husband directs anime in L.A. And several years later, she had remembered me, and I got a, I started talking to them, and they were like, oh, they're looking for a new voice over at Bang Zoom Entertainment for a character in a show called Overman King Gainer. And the show was by um, to a guy named Tomino, who did Mobile Suit Gundam, if you know that show. And yeah, and so Over Me King Gainer is a little bit more of a humorous, you know, not as serious as Mobile Suit Gundam, but still mecha style. And so I went in and I, I auditioned at Bang Zoom, and I didn't think I was going to get it because I had never done a lot of voiceover or anything. I wanted to do voiceover, but I was like, oh, there's no way they're going to cast me, you know, I'm, I'm a newbie. And so I went in and, you know, had no experience of, of how you even record anime. Which is, you know, you have a screen and you have to dub it, you know, to the vo to the lips and all that stuff. I mean, they were new. I was I was new, so that was still fine. But so I just did it, and I had a lot of fun with it. I wasn't ner nervous at all because I said I had no chance. So I just have fun. And then um, about a month later, I got a call, and uh, they asked if I would come in and just do some smaller parts on Captain Herlock and then on a show called Stelvio. I said, oh great, you know, I'd love to. So I didn't think I got Overman King Gainer. And then, um, probably three months later, I got a call, and the woman who was the manager at the time, her name was Mommy Okada. So, you know, every time Mommy calls, you know, you're on the phone, you're in the su supermarket, and it's, hi, Mommy, you know, and people are looking at you. You, know? <laughs> you still call your mom Mommy, you know? Uh, but she called, and she goes, hi, Dad, oh, this is Mommy calling. And she goes, congratulations, you got the, the lead in Overman King Gainer. And what they did was they sent the voices, I guess, to Japan, and the producers, and I guess the creator, you know, wanted to pick the English voice. And they knew I didn't have a lot of experience, so they were, you know, they, and they had the time to work with me, which was great. So I learned so much, you know, in that first, uh, doing that first show. And, you know, we do them in segments. So we did, like, maybe volumes one through four, um, one month. And then we were off several months, and then later we would do the next set, you know, off several months, later the next set. So during that time I got to do that show, and then I started getting known for, you know, other shows. They started putting me in other stuff. So I, I feel so lucky, you know, that I was recommended, because, you know, if I was never recommended, I, I never would have had that opportunity. I wouldn't have even known how to, you know, get into that, you know, because it's such a small little, little group. I mean... It, it, it's like anything in acting in Los Angeles. It's unless your agent sends you or you find out, you know, you can submit yourself in some kind of way. But when if you're recommended, it's such sometimes a, a great break, you know, because it's a way you wouldn't have been able to get in on your own. 